So uh, my clock is showing me that it's four o'clock already. Uh, I think we can just like slowly start today's webinar. So welcome everybody uh, to this last webinar of this series of online science communication trainings. Uh, this is the fifth week in a row that we have been doing this. And I'm just really happy to see how many people are still coming to this after all these five weeks. I think that bodes really well for the whole webinars, uh, webinars uh, as a whole. I hope it's been really useful for everybody. And I hope that uh, it also means that a lot of people are going to finish the whole thing and send in a video in the end. In any case, today uh, we will be focusing on the experience of uh, our last Science Slam winner, uh, Cheng Tong Chong, who is with us here today. He's going to share his experience of science communication and uh, how it is to participate in the Science Slam. He's been so very kind to um, uh, to agree to uh, doing a one hour session here today with us. And following this one hour session, we will do a half an hour uh, a Q and A session where we can kind of uh, go over all the little details and answer all the last questions and so on. But uh, yeah, maybe before I start, uh, for those few of you that are maybe coming and joining for the first time today, uh, my name is Haltor Berg, and I am the country coordinator of Eurexis China. And I'm here also with my colleague, uh, Anna Fakinetti, uh, who is also a country coordinator of Eurexis China. Anna, are you here? Yeah, hi, hi, everybody. Welcome to this training. As well as with our uh, good colleague here at the Beijing office, uh, uh, Vanessa Lee, who is also part of Eurexis, Chi uh, Eurexis China. Are you here, Vanessa? Yes. 大家好,我是Yorkshire's的Vanessa,非常欢迎大家来参加今天的培训。So, uh, uh, thank you, Vanessa. So, uh, I want to, before we start and go, I will introduce uh, Dr. Chong. I want to mention a little bit about the practical details uh, when it comes to the video submission. So, this is our last webinar. And for those of you that have participated in all five webinars so far, and we've been keeping track of that, so uh, we can see who has been coming and who hasn't. But for those of you that have uh, participated in all five and are interested in getting a diamond cert certification, we have uh, this requirement of people have to send in a final video where they will test the skills that they have developed throughout uh, the series of, of communication trainings. And we will, uh, we will basically uh, give you some feedback and helpful, uh, <laughs> helpful tips and recommendation how to improve. Hopefully this will make uh, this whole training like really worthwhile. It will be an opportunity for you to try out the things that you've learned and then actually getting feedback on what things you can improve and what you could do better, customized, personalized, the uh, feedback from us here at the Eurexis China team and other experts that we will be involving. Uh, a little bit about how that works for those of you that are interested in the details. We, I will introduce that right now, but my colleague Anna will also be sending this as an email to everybody after the webinar. So you can now, if you haven't started already, you can now record something that we call a video slam. And the video slam uh, is a 10 minutes long video about uh, your scientific interest, whatever you're uh, researching at the moment and so on, where you try your best to try to get people uh, interested in your research using the tools and uh, the tips of science communication that we introduced to you. Uh, if you really want to uh, know how uh, we are foreseeing this uh, slam to look like, you can look at our last webinar where we uh, contributed last where we used the last part of the webinar to talk a little bit about how we think the science slams and the video slams should look like so you can go back to that the recording and the uh, and the slides for that are as we speak being uploaded online so we'll be sharing that with you very very soon you'll be able to see all of that so a real science slam as we introduced it back then is uh, 10 minutes long and this is probably something that dr chong can also tell you a little bit about uh, and if you send us a real science slam, something that is about 10 minutes long, you will also uh, get the extra benefit of being automatically qualified for this year's Eurexis Science Slam China, which will be taking place in the second half of this year, next fall. 
And uh, we really, obviously, we really hope that most of you will try for, for that. If you really are proud of your science communication skills, if you really want to put a lot of work into it and so on, you will get more than just feedback. You will be uh, getting this possibility to become the top five uh, science slam submitters and being in, uh, invited to join the Eurex Science Slam China 2021. The sixth time that we do it, you could be one of those one of those five. And if you do participate in Eurex Science Slam China 2021 and you're selected to come to the finals, you have also the uh, option of uh, how to say that? the possibility to win the final Eurex Science Slam prize which uh, at the moment is a little bit in, uh, un indetermined depending on how things will go, but normally it would entail uh, a trip to Europe to meet a science science uh, scientist or a science institution of your choice. So it's pretty much a, a lot of things that you can win if you if you really try your best. That being said, you don't necessarily need to send in exactly 10 minutes. If you just, or if you're only interested in getting the feedback from us and getting the diamond certification, we just ask you to send us at least two minutes long video, and that will qualify you for the certification and for the feedback. So we are expecting videos between two and ten minutes long. Then we will give you two weeks, uh, a little bit more than two weeks. Uh, we are expecting to receive your videos by next, uh, the the Friday after the next one, the Friday twenty third of April before midnight, so before the end of the day. And you can send us the video at uh, our email address, which is china.durexs.net. Uh, and the way that you can send us this is that you can basically send us any link to a video hosted online. So I don't know if you where, where you'll prefer to host your a video, so you can basically put it anywhere online, like let's say Tencent Video or Yoku or wherever you prefer, and you can send us the link. Or you could, for example, use Baidu Cloud and uh, and that will be also perfectly acceptable. And you can send us that if you prefer a little bit more private way to send it to us. And then after that, uh, we will go over all the video submissions uh, with our team. We will give you feedback based on the criteria that we introduced in last uh, webinar. And depending on how many video submissions we get, we'll try to give you our feedback as soon as possible alongside with the certification. So uh, this is a nutshell, uh, the process of the video submission. Maybe uh, Vanessa would like to explain it a little bit. Uh, Vanessa, are you there? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sure. Uh,大家好，是这样的，就是现在呢，我们已经经历过，就现在是第五个培训，然后我们之前提到过，如果您想得到我们就是纸质版的钻石认证，需要您这边给我们发一个小视频，呃，小视频呢可以是两到十分
Otherwise, we could like, uh, yeah, we will be sending you this in an email. So that's for sure. Uh, but this brings me to the next uh, really uh, more uh, fun thing of the day, which is uh, uh, an opportunity for me to uh, introduce my my uh, friend and colleague, uh, uh, Dr. Chung Tong Chung Chong, who uh, was the winner of the Science Slam uh, China in 2018. Uh, back in 2018, we had the Science Slam here in Beijing in Yongguanzun, and we had a nice guest coming from the European Commission in, in, in Brussels who came over to China. And we had like five excellent slammers uh, spending an evening uh, doing their 10 minute slams, getting uh, voted by the audience. And in the end, it was Dr. Chong that 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 won out. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was on the topic of, of, of biofuel in aviation and how that was used. So uh, Dr. Dr. Chung Tong Chung is an associated professor at the China UK Low Carbon College of the Shanghai Jiao Tong University in China. And I think maybe I'll just allow himself to, to introduce himself and, and, and start his presentation. Uh, Dr. Chung, are you there? I am here. Nice to meet nice really? from you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you very much, Hodor. Thank you, Eurasex, for inviting me to give uh, a training like this. Uh, it all brings back memory. I mean, two years back, in December 2018, I, was, uh, I had the privilege to be selected to be uh, one of the finalists to present in front of a very nice audience at Beijing. And um, everything was still, uh, is still clear in my mind. I couldn't forget that wonderful evening. It was really great. And I had so much uh, joy and a good experience with that Eurasex Science Lab. So once again, I really thank uh, Eurasex for giving me this opportunity. And also let me share my experience with the future Science Lammers here. So um, without any further ado, uh, let us get into uh, the final installment of this communication training, which is an experience sharing, basically, right, from, uh, from, from myself. Okay, uh, before I start my presentation, I want to show you something. I'm now at my office. You can see there are some dart bots here, right? So I like to do some dots here. But I want to show you this. I just turn my table around. There's a mock tag on my wall, which I paste that price on my wall to remind me how exciting it was, the Science Slam. That was the ticket that I won to Europe from the Science Slam 2018. <laughs> so now uh, I have so much to share with you. Uh, let us go into some of my slides here, all right? Right. Um, so, again, this is more of an experience sharing. Um, to start off with, I would like to say that I'm not truly an expert, uh, but I have some experience in science communications. I have trained students before for science communications training. And apart from Eurasex Science Slams, I have also participated in various other science communications competitions. So. I have gained some experience along the way, and probably from uh, 2018 onwards until now, I have more experience to share. And maybe from my perspective, uh, what I think science communications is, and maybe some of the useful tips that you guys can adopt along the way. Right. So again, my, my name is Cheng Tong Chong, and I'm from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. So here's the content of today's sharing. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce myself. Then I'm going to talk about what is science communications all about. Following that is the content, the PPT slides, and presentations that we should take care of uh, when, we, when we try to uh, approach these uh, science communications competitions. Uh, again, thanks, Hodor, for introducing me. Uh, my name is Cheng Tong Chong. You can call me Chong. 
I am from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. I'm also a researcher. I'm also a scientist. So I have been working in the area of bioenergy, combustion, renewable energy systems. That's why my science slam was about the topic of my research, biofuel in aviation. I have been a lecturer for 10 years plus, teaching technical subjects. And maybe some of you uh, who are doing some technical, uh, who are in engineering or some technical background, you will know that some of these subjects could be, you know, probably not so exciting, you know, very, very uh, gru gru grueling, uh, very tedious. So that gets me think thinking, how can I deliver my lecture more effectively? How can I deliver my, my research? How can I disseminate the knowledge to my students more effectively? make it more interesting so that students wouldn't fall asleep during my class. So that's where I got my thinking. I should improve on my communication skills, i.e. science communication. I should make my subject, my delivery interesting so that everybody can, 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 can be attentive to my lecture, right? That is why I start getting into this uh, science communications, okay? I'm from Shanghai Jiao Tong. It's located in Shanghai, so one of the very prestigious universities in China. And this is the college where I'm from. I'm from China, UK, Low Carbon College. This college is a bit unique because it's a very international college. We have a lot of international students here. It was jointly established by University of Edinburgh and Shanghai Jiao Tong University in 2017. Right now, we are three years old. We are located in Lingang. Shanghai. Now, Lingang is a special free trade zone in Shanghai. It's a very modern, international, low-carbon city. It's very accessible from the airport, just 35 minutes from the Putong International Airport. Here, I would like to extend my invitation to all of you uh, to our college. If you drop by to Shanghai, uh, drop by in Shanghai, come to our college, uh, drop me a, a, an email or a message. Now, what brings me here today to share my experience with you is this, Science Slam, which is a signature event uh, introduced by Eurasex in China. Okay, so if you look, go to this website, you will see that, oh, share your research, science communications, Science Slam. I mean, there are a lot of uh, interesting information in there from past winners, from tips, etc. You can, uh, You can have a look here. Now, again, what is this Science Slam all about, right? Science Slam is a scientific talk where researchers can present their work, disseminate the knowledge to a non-technical background, non-expert audience. This is the crucial part. You are not talking to someone expert. You are not talking to a professor or academics in your field. So the key is you have to make them understand what you're talking about. You have to show the interesting part or the, the enlightening part of your research. And this slam is a very good way uh, to show the fascinating side of your research to the public. So this is where I get my experience. Now, probably you have seen this video uploaded by the Eurasex China team. So I'm gonna show you a very short clip here. Right. Uh, I, I wonder, could you hear the, the, the voice of the video just now? Uh, no, I think what you need to do is that when you share, you need to click uh, share your desktop audio. So I didn't, oh, I was right. not able to hear it. Uh, do you want I to see, try it again or uh, 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 like right. try to share your okay. screen again maybe or? Ah, oh, right. Okay. All right. Thanks for reminding that. All 
Can you share again uh, this slide? Because we Chinese love hot pot so much that every year we produce about 50 million tons of waste in water. That's very good to stop. <laughs> so why do we need biofuel in the first place? But the main reason is to tackle global climate change. Because we want to substitute uh, fossil fuel. Right. Audio, was it uh, audible just now? Excellent. Can you hear? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Now, uh, just want to show you this video to let you have a feel on the night of the science lab. Look at the audience and the, the, the stage, the ambience. It was really tense, to be honest. It was quite frightening to me. Right. But it was fun at the same time. The audience was great. And um, because we with luck, with a token of luck, I was able to win this science slam in 2018. And that was Mr. John Eric Paquette, uh, who is the Director General, Gen General uh, from the uh, European Commissions, uh, to hand me uh, the, 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 the mock check, which I just showed you just now, uh, hanging on my wall. So, just now, Hodo uh, mentioned that you will get an uh, all expenses paid trip to Europe, uh, which I did. Now, the Director General very kindly invited me uh, to go to European Commissions in Brussels to visit him, which I kindly accepted and I promised. So the following year in April, I used that check, used that uh, return ticket, fly to Brussels, Brussels, uh, which, uh, which is the, uh, the, where the, uh, the headquarters of the EU is located. So I had a great time there, and that was uh, Lauren, uh, from the energy department, uh, kind, kindly showing me around. Now, I didn't stop there. After Brussels, I went to Portugal, where I attended a conference, went to University of Lisbon, met some nice researchers over there, and had a great time visiting the place. After that, from Portugal, I went to um, Germany, where I visited the DOR. Okay? And then I come back to China. So it was a very exciting uh, things that I got from the Science Lab. Apart from the honor from winning the competition, I have this extension of experience from the Eurasex that allows me to, to meet, to go to the organization, organizations that I wanted and also meet some interesting people along the way. So it has brought me a lot of uh, good experience so far. Okay. That's my background, who I am, why I'm here, sharing my experience with you, and a bit of my experience with Science Lab. Right now, let's go into what is science communication. Why do we need it? Science communications has two words here, science and communications. Now, science here is a body of knowledge and process. Okay? Probably most of, the, uh, most of us here are scientists, or lecturers or someone working in the area of science even though you even if you are not a scientist you can still be a good science communicator it doesn't mean that science communication is exclusively for science scientists right so the idea of this is that we have to disseminate the scientific knowledge to the audience right now science can be disseminated through a number of ways either through a report, journal papers, which we are so trained to do so, or newspaper, you can write to them, journal papers, or even nowadays, new media, online news, right? YouTube, Billy Billy, or whatever. Everybody can communicate science now, but there is one particular branch, science communications, yeah, which is presenting in front of a public. That is something that I realized not many scientists have training uh, in this area, okay? So we have been trained to write, we have, to, we have been trained to present, to defend our thesis, our viva, but we were never trained to communicate to a general public, okay? This is where uh, we, we, we can learn a bit of uh, useful tips and try to improve our science communications here. 
all right so science uh plus technology okay science probably uh, you may be thinking that oh natural science but uh technology is also you know developed from science uh the the all the in-kind technologies 5g going to space 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 shuttle astronomy all this can be communicated via science communications why is it important because the public wants to know there is a need for the public to understand what scientists are doing for example in this uh, one or two uh, two years where covid-19 pandemic has been prevalent all around the world science communications has never been more important for right even in this paper published by nature exemplifies how important science communication is because we have to disseminate the scientific knowledge first first thing to the general public the public wants to know policy maker they want to uh, do uh, for, formulate their policy based on scientific findings so science communication is very important and if you are a scientist if you are some uh, working in the area of science uh, it is vital for us to deliver the message clearly to the public i'm not sure if you recognize these two uh, gentlemen here on your left hand side is david attenborough who is a very famous uh animal planet guy right if you watch bbc animal planet you probably probably can uh, recognize uh the very animatic voice there that is uh, sir david attenborough okay the way he presents his scientific explanation his observation on the animals on the planet earth it was so captivating that is a clear example of effective science communications right so go and look back the bbc animal planet you uh, you can you can get a feel of what effective science communication is now on the right hand side here not sure if you recognize him his name is brian cox he's a very renowned astrophysicist from university of manchester now he's a, also a very great science communicator he also have uh, has his own show with BBC to talk about the astronomy, the wonder of the universe. And if you have listened to his talk, you will be so you will be marvel on how he can explain the complexity of the space with simple words so that the audience can relate to you and can understand. And I think that is what science communication is about. To, to degrade the complexity of the science, not to degrade, to uh, to downgrade the level of science from something very difficult, complex into something that uh, a non-expert can understand. Right. So again, we need to share the findings with the public, disseminate our knowledge, and also for practical reasons like getting fundings, investment, teach, reporting, etc. So you can use the skill in science communication to help you to, to reach those goals, right? And the idea of science communication, communication is to convince people with your idea, all right? Not only to policymakers, but students or even children. Okay? I have two uh, very cute uh, children here. So I always try to explain the scientific phenomena with something very, with simple words to them so that, oh, they can understand. The wonder of the nature right so it is a skill i think it is a skill it is not inherently embedded in some scientists but it's a skill that we can adopt along the way now the question now is how should science communication be done is it the same as normal public speaking or debating or is it the same as podium recital now if I want to summarize what science communication is, it should be exciting, it should be fun. At the same time, it should be enlightening. Now imagine the room of audience I showed just now during the science land. They spend their whole evening listening to scientists disseminating their lecture or disseminating their, their, their knowledge. Would they want to be bombarded with all the complex equations or all the scientific terms that they don't understand 
Probably not. They want to be enlightened. They want to enjoy the show. They want to be entertained. Now that is science land, right? I spend my evening here. I want to listen to a show. I want to see you perform. So you can think of science communication in a way is like a, uh, it's a, it's a show and you are the main character. You are the storyteller for that particular night, right? I put a picture here. That was the science, previous science land winner. Look at the way he, she dressed. Interesting. And she also used some props to assist in her presentation. All right. So I want to be entertained. Start with that. All right. Now, the ingredients for uh, effective science communications, I summarize that into three main categories. Content, slides, and presentation. CSP. All right. Science communication. Let's start with the content. Now, to begin, who are your target audience? Gauge the level of knowledge and the needs of the audience members. Are they from scientific community? Are they professors? Or are they students? Get a feel on what level they are. Only then you start formulate, start thinking about the story you want to tell. Right? Are they your colleagues? If they are non-technical uh, people, right? Probably you want to present your scientific findings in a way that they can understand. Okay, if they are non-technical person, then don't use jargon, don't use big words. And for science slam, the people coming list to, to your talk, they are most probably from a very diverse background. Some from technical, some are from social science, some are just general public who are just interested to know what science is. All right, so don't use too, uh, too complex words or sentences during your, your speeches. Now, after that, after you have locked down your target audience, let's start formulating our story. A story is a story. It needs a beginning, a middle, and an end. Right? You don't start watching a you, you don't you don't you don't see a movie just start with climax and then you know no ending. Every movie, every story must have a beginning, climax, then ending. Right. That is the basic. So you uh, think of this flow. How do you want to present your, 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 your story? Start with a problem, with a background. Then what is the solution? What are the interesting results? Possibly introduce some climax along the way. Aha! The aha moment, eureka moment is very important for science. Then end with a bang. Okay? So storytelling. How to deliver your speech in a very story uh, in a in a in a story flow that everybody can can follow. Now begin with a problem. All right, start with a scenario. For example, bridge in your story with a scenario or or an anecdote, right, or a joke for for that to captivate the audience. Right, let them be uh, engrossed with your beginning. Oh wow. That's a great start. Right? Then after that, you have to start filling up, start beefing up your presentation. What gap do you think your work could fill? Describe what you did or the methodology. Don't use the word methodology, but describe what you did logically in a way and build up to your result. How you're doing it and then how you get that result. The link, the causal link in between. Right? You have to build up the momentum from there. Then, Climax, introduce one or two aha moments during that 10-minute speeches. For example, okay, one of my highlights could be interaction with the audience. I ask a question to them and then maybe get some feedback. And that is a good way to engage with the audience. Right? Uh, or possibly, uh, you, can, uh, you can show some nice video. That is also another aha moment that I mentioned. Right. Then for ending, give a good conclusion. Okay. Let them know uh, what is the story is, what is the ending, where you hope to go from there. Okay. So that is the flow of the story. It must have the, uh, the opening and the end. Okay. So I see that you have been thinking about your story. Now the question now is, is your story exciting? Right. 
Now, test out with some of your colleagues or your family members. Convey your excitement. And for this, I mean passion. You have to be very passionate about your work. All right. Now, don't start your talk in a very dull or, you know, scientific manner. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to present to you is this, this, this. And the result is this, this, this. What we did here, we used this method to test out, to characterize uh, this material, etc. No passion. Okay? When I mean passion, you have to inject the excitement into that. Ladies and gentlemen, look at this result. All the scientists have cracked their brain, but they have come to no solution. But I have found the magic wand to this. Convey your excitement, right? Fill in with some anecdote and some aha moments. But at the same time, keep it simple. Don't use jargons, big words, or acronyms, or even equations. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you uh, this equation. We use the Lagrangian Eulerian equations, and then this Newtonian fluid using this derivative to get this formula. Oh, come on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what you'll be talking about. All right, keep it simple. Don't show all the equation com and complexity. It wouldn't be helpful for the audience to understand your story. Now, next point is begin and conclude with a purpose and a bank. Start with a problem you want to solve. Give a scenario related to it. And then relate to the scientific research that you try to try to solve. What method do you use? And then at the end, give some useful indication that your work is useful to the public. Uh, that is the end with the bank. Okay. Last point, element of surprise. Now, when you frame your story, you have to think about whether it's exciting. Does it have the elements of surprise here? Multimedia, do you have some exciting video to help you illustrate your background, your methodology, etc.? Do I need to dress up? For example, could I dress up my robe to make my talk more interesting? Yes, that is actually a very good way to convey your professionalism. Right. If you are a medical doctor or a nurse working in the medical field talking about uh, CPR or some, uh, so, or some medical devices, you may want to look like a doctor. And that is how you can engage with the audience. Oh, look, hey, I am representing a medical officer here and I'm trying to tell you a medical story. Yes, dress up. Why not? Right. You can get their attention. Props. Okay, I could use my handphone or I can use some scientific tools to help to illustrate my methodology. Experiments. Can I do some simple experiments during my presentation? Yes, by all means. If you want to act out, if you want to do some illu illustrations of experiments, yes, by all means. Right. So this is to make your story exciting. Right, some other tips, yeah? The title of your talk should not be too specific or too broad. Uh, what do I mean by that? Right. For example, the first uh, example, a multi-center evalu evaluation of the COVID-19 rapid antigen, blah, blah, blah. Now, this may be suitable for a journal paper title, but may not be so suitable for a science slam talk. Because you want the, the title to be straightforward and easily understandable. Okay, for example, right, I just make up a title. Track and eliminate the wicked coronavirus. Okay, I know this is, I know what this talk is going to be about. All right, so keep it simple. Keep it uh, so that non-experts non can understand them easily. Now, how about this title? Renewable energy towards. Not a good solution, not a good answer. Because that would be too broad, isn't it? Right? Okay, renewable energy. That is too broad. I don't know what we what you want to talk about. Okay, so title is very important, right? Think about it. Now, for science land, 
you need to have element of science, not just common introductions or know-how. What I mean by that is that your presentation must have some elements of technicality or scientific knowledge behind it. For example, this title, How to Prevent COVID-19 or Stroke. This, I would think that, oh, this is just common sense, you know, uh, just want to disseminate the know-how or prevention. No scientific element in it. Right? For content-wise, I would suggest that you have to go deeper into that. Okay? For example, you can introduce a method of detection, some novel idea, the way to detect it, or the mechanism of how coronavirus works, okay? how it attacks the body cell, how it goes into the bloodstream, uh, defunct our immunity, immunity, uh, right? immunity uh, all this uh, system, etc. Or how vaccine works, how it attacks the virus, cripples it, you know, heals us. So you have to have the element of science into it. Uh, that is science communication. Then, know your subject well. Uh, if you are a scientist working in that area, then you have this advantage. You know your subject, right? Because there will be a Q&A session after the 10 minutes presentation. Now, the, the, you know, some of the judges, they may ask some technical questions and you, know, you, may be, you may be caught by surprise. Oh, right, I never thought of that or you couldn't think of some scientific explanation. So you have to know your subject well, even though you prepare your scientific uh, presentation nicely, but you also have to think of the general knowledge, right? The current scenario, all this. Okay? And then during the Q&A session, provide clear and short answer. You don't spend your time defending your, 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 your presentation, no. Right? Don't spend five minutes or you know, five sentences just to argue with the audience, uh, argue with the judge, that's not the way, okay? Right, so after the content, let's go into the PPT slide, okay? PPT slide, the structure of the slide. I always tell my student, your slide has to be visually appealing, not worthy, all right? Figure, has to be more than words, okay? For example, this is one slide, I put it up there, sample text. Visually, it looks good, less words and very figure, okay? Structure your slides, use subsections, signpost your, your slides. One, introduction, two, right, method, three. So that it has a good structure, structural flow. Right now, you it is optional. You don't have to put the sign posting one subsection two, uh, one point two, etc. Uh, you can do it alternatively. You can just use plain slides, okay, smoothly, all with the way down without one point something, two point something, three point something. You can do that as well. But the logic and the flow must be there. Okay, structure your slides. That's the that's the whole idea. Lastly, proof read your slide. Right. No error, no grammatical error, uh, no obvious uh, wrong facts. Please be, uh, be aware of that. Now, for a slide, because each slide wouldn't stay long on the screen, okay, don't use long sentences because people won't be able to read it and they don't read it. Usually they just scan. I always tell my students that you have to use the 5x5 five five rules or 7x7 seven seven rules. Okay? That means the most is five lines, five words, or seven lines, seven words. Not more than that. Don't give a complete sentence because that would be, that would be like a lecture slide. Right. For example, these slides, I put it up here. There are some figures there, and each of these columns, there are some long sentences. The words are too small. I wouldn't be able to read it, and people have no time to read it. Give bullet points. Put some keywords there, and then the message, people will get it, right? Avoid long sentences. And it, the slide has to be readable. Uh, for headlines, you can go up to 40. For text, 18 to 28, aerial size, aerial font size. References, you can put, make it small, 12 to 14. Right, so these are just some of the tips for the slides. Spice up your video. 
All right, spice up your slides. Uh, put some background music, short video, animations. Uh, these are all the tricks that you can inject into your aha moment. Okay, but because when I watch a video like this, I can explain while the animation is going on. Oh, that is a great way to support your presentation. Background music, just to you know, arouse the emotions, ah, the tension and the suspense. You can put it there as well. Short video about your work, about news clip, about, uh, uh, about some news, no problem. That is uh, something that we should, uh, we should include as well. Okay, a variety of elements of surprise here. Okay, so that is the slides, yeah? I've talked about the content and the slide, and lastly, the presentation. It's very important that you need to be familiarized with the stage to tell you a secret. Until now, I still have stage fright. Even though I've been more than 10 years of lecturers, every time I go onto the stage, I still feel the, the tension and also the adrenaline rush. My legs could be shaking. So it is very important that us go to the stage, experience the room and the stage, familiarize with the stage. Visualize yourself, the position where you want to stand. Okay, because the stage, you have the whole stage. The whole room is yours now. Where do you want to stand? Right in the middle? Or do you want to walk around to the side? You may want to cover the whole stage so that it looks as though you are performing. Okay, so get familiarized with the stage. Be there at that venue, you know, two or three hours be before that and practice there. Okay, that is very important. And believe me, you will, you will benefit from this, uh, from this exercise, yeah? Familiarize with the stage. Now, I put A, B, C here. Where should I be standing? B? Yes, when you come out, stand right at the center, bow before you begin. Okay? At that location, B, you can start off there. Then during the speech, during your presentation, you may want to walk to C to engage with the audience on that side. Then go back to the, to the center again, B. Then go to A so that you have, you cover the whole stage. I think this is very important. Now, don't come up here and stand at A. Then the whole presentation, you just look at the screen, look at the audience. I don't think that is great because you don't utilize the whole stage. Right? Remember, you are performing up there. Cover the whole stage, but don't walk too, too frequent. B to C, C to B, C to A. No, don't. You have to manage your position. I stand at B, one to two slides. Then I go to C, maybe a few slides there. Then I walk back. It has to be planned. Okay, so that is important. You have to visualize, plan your presentation well. Gain control of the stage. Manage your front. Okay, so the key here is breathe slowly. Right. Even though you know, deep down you're frightened, you may be shaking, but manage your pace control yourself breathe in slowly visualize yourself giving a relaxed talk now the audience even though there may be plenty of them but they won't you know they are nice people they are not here to discredit you or shoot you down or want to bring you down no imagine picture or visualize yourself giving a talk to your friends right if you see some familiar faces there you smile at them, usually the audience will smile back. Uh, then you have a more relaxed and more controlled uh, scenario. Mind control is very important, right? Cycle yourself. Relax, confident, right? I know my stuff. I've prepared this for a long time. And then it will come up better. Okay, so gain control of the stage. Manage your pace. Breathe in and then deliver as normal. Now, body posture, okay? Stride up to the podium. 
Stand tall with your chest lifted. Don't go up there like this. Uh, this is a sig signal that you are afraid, that you are not open up. Okay? When you do like this, when you hold your mic like this, or when you do like this, you are telling your body that you are tense. You want to protect yourself. Now, I want you to practice. Stride up to the podium. Stand up tall with your chest lifted. Engage the audience and smile. Smile. That is very important. And I tell you, when you smile, magic. Because the judge or the audience will smile back to you. All right? So body posture is very important. And then our hands. Don't put it in your pocket. Okay? Practice. Put it right up front. Sometimes use a gesture like this. Okay? To help in your presentation. Okay? Don't do this. All right? Or don't do some unconscious posture like this. Put it in the pocket. No. I want to show you this. Right? Don't tuck your hands inside your pocket because uh, this is not science. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, this topic. Uh, I have done this vaccine and I want to tell you how it works. Oh, come on. No. Right, that is a bad impression to the audience. Right? So body posture is very important. Stand up straight. Firmly rooted. Okay. Don't agitate too much. Let's begin your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk about this topic and why is it important? Right? Don't, don't move too much. Ah, that's another key. Don't move too much. Right? Body posture is very important. Voice projection. Ensure your voice is clear and loud. Now, usually the venue will provide you the microphone. Okay. During my science slam, I did not use the microphone because when I survey around, the room wasn't that big and my voice was loud. So I have the confidence that I can manage the whole room uh, without using the mic. Because when I use the mic, I have to hold like this, right? Okay. But if you do, right, if, if you have a natural soft voice, you may want to use a microphone. Make sure that your microphone is at the adequate distance, not too close. Because you don't want to, you know, frighten the audience with your, your sudden boom or sudden breathing or something, right? Make sure the voice is audible to the audience. Test out the mic before the, uh, the event starts. Okay, if they have a headset like this, microphone, that is even better. Now, control your pace. Modulate your voice. Because when you tell the story, sometimes you can soften your voice to give it a bit of suspense. Sometimes you want to give it a bit of excitement, right? This is the result. Ah, modulate your voice, the tone of your voice. That is very important so that all right, you have the beginning, the climax, the end, right? So modulation of your voice is very important. Avoid filler words like, um, uh, you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today I want to show you this, um, uh, you know, you know, so we tend to do this subconsciously sometimes, but for science slam, when you're out there, filter out these words. Don't use them. Right? Filler words. Right, so I have mentioned this. Uh, voice projection. Dress clothes. So you see that. If you don't know what to wear, just like me. Dress up with coats, right? Official dresses like this to make it look, make you look more professional. Oh, that is perfectly acceptable. But if you want to wear dresses, right? But when we present some, some of this topic, try to relate to your dress code. For example, if you want to present some medical topic, it is okay to dress up uh, uh, like, like a medical officer. It's fine. If I want to present something related to sciences, yeah. it's okay. I put on my lab coat. It's perfectly fine. But if I want to spice it up, I dress up like the final picture there. You know, some very fancy dress with props. It is fine as well. But try to avoid evening gown, jeans, okay? You know, uh, normal jacket, sweater, because that don't make you look professional at all. 
Now go in there as if you want to pitch your presentation for a contract. Try to pitch to the audience, try to pitch to a minister and judges. Impress them with your dress code. Dress to kill. Okay, so dress code is something you have to think about, uh, which I think is very important. Now, for your delivery, okay, stand up, look fresh, style up your hair. Now, don't go in there with your messy hair, bad hair day. No. All right. So, uh, don't read from slides. A lot of science communicators, they tend to rely on the slide because they tend to feel secure looking at the slide and read from that. Uh, this is the first method I use to do this. Secondly, then we do this. Okay? Keep flip-flopping back, front and back, front and back. Read from the slides. Stand at no. Don't turn your back against the audience. Uh, this is how I do it. Uh, if you look, look here, all right, this is uh, number one, number two, number three. No. Remember, you're on a stage, you're performing, you're delivering to the audience. Your face must look at them. Eye contact with the audience. This is how you present your story. Not read from the slides. That is ill-prepared. If you have, want to have demonstrations, that is great. But make sure that your demonstration is visible to everybody. Okay? For example, uh, uh, this is one example. Uh, if you want to do some very small items to do some chemical reaction, probably that is not a very good idea. because the people at the back there, they wouldn't be able to see what is inside there, right? If you want to use some general props to do some something that everybody can see, that is great. That is commendable, right? For example, on the right-hand side here, she used a picture which everybody can see. Hey, look at this. Use a prop is good. And the audience really appreciate that. Now, time management. If 10 minutes is allocated to you, then 10 minutes it should be. You have to practice, practice, and practice so that you, you know what pace you should be at to manage your presentation at the given time. Right? If you exceed 10 minutes, most likely the judges will be frowning at, uh, at you and also points will be deducted. So that is a, uh, a no-no. Conclude well, don't drift. Sometimes we tend not to be able to conclude. Uh, uh, again, this is a, then you keep on dragging on and dragging on. No, don't drift. You have to plan your ending well, tie back to the beginning. Right? right. So, practice is the keyword here. Now, QA. <clears throat> so, I've, uh, I've done the uh, uh, presentation. Okay, here's the QA part. How to manage a Q&A is also uh, something very important. Start with a yes or no. If you are asked a question, then explain two or three sentences. That, that, that's it. Don't argue with them. Agree with the audience. I give you a tip. Right? If you are being asked a difficult question, you can start with, oh, that's a very good question. However, blah, 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 blah. Okay, maybe it will buy you one or two seconds of time to organize your thoughts. Thanks for your opinion. I think it's very relevant, but blah, blah, blah. Thank you for your question. I think, uh, I beg your pardon, can you repeat your question if you don't understand the questions? Uh, so some of these starting line may be able to help you uh, to, to do your Q&A. Thank you. All right, smile, very important. Right. Here is one more video. That is a remarkable achievement. And we wonder how is it technically feasible? Which percentage? Sorry? Which China China uh, China era? No, but which percentage of the coconut? Two percent or three percent? That one is fifty percent, and this is twenty percent. That leads me to the top of that. What is biofuel and how is it applied in the gas turbine engine? Yeah. I'm not sure whether you uh, realize it, but during my science slam talk uh, on that night, uh, during my talk, an audience asked a question during my talk. Oh, 
maybe he was uh, very excited to know or wanted to know uh, what, what do I mean by that for clarification. But it was during my competition, during my talk there. I have planned 10 minutes for my talk, but all of a sudden, a spanner thrown at me. Question was asked. Of course, deep down, I feel like, oh man, I have a talk to, to, to deliver here, but you have to remain calm. Unexpected events like this, you have to remain calm. Take that question, answer it quickly, and go back to your talk immediately. Okay, with a posture. Don't reject him. Oh, I'm sorry, this is my time. Don't do that. Right, you have to remain cool. Let them ask the questions. Thank you very much. I'm going to present that in a moment. Okay, unexpected event like this could prop up, uh, which is an, uh, a good experience for me uh, so that I can share with you. Okay, I think for today, I have shared with you um, some of the tips on the content, the slide, and also the presentation. Okay, again, I think Science Slam is a very good platform to uh, all of you to present your work. Okay, so try to submit a video, try to participate in this event. Now, you never know where this could lead you to. Okay, so that's all from, my, from me today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eurasex, for giving me this uh, opportunity to present. Uh, I'll pass back to you, Haldor. Thank you. Hello? Sorry, I was trying to find my microphone yeah. here. <laughs> so thank you so much for your excellent uh, presentation. I'm so sorry about that last part. Uh, <laughs> I think the uh, the the person that was uh, uh, interrupting you it did not realize sort of like uh, the weight of what was happening at that point. But this is something that could always happen, right? You never know if um, if uh, somebody might interrupt you or. Or, or as they call yeah, 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 hackling, but... right? So there might be people in the audience that are going <laughs> trying to hackle you. And uh, yeah, so it's good yeah. that you pointed this out. I thought that was a really nice, interesting point, actually. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation, Chung. We have some time now. Uh, if there are any questions from the people in the audience, let's let me take a look here. I'm going to first uh, take a look at the chat box. If people have been uh, talking there. Mm. Otherwise, uh, we could also open up for the. Uh... Why, why don't I find, I find the chat box? Liao Tian. Let's see. Uh, here we are. Oh, OK. So uh, I see that the, the people that are asking uh, mostly are just like uh, cherishing you uh, and uh, <laughs> thanking Thank you, you for, your, for, your, for your presentation. Very ener energetic presentation. Uh, I see that uh, there's a question from Cornelia. Uh, is there any difference between the final video and the science slam? Uh, this is maybe something that I could answer. Uh, the, uh, the video... Uh, does not need to be exactly like a science slam. Uh, it depends on what you want to get out of it. So if you're only interested in getting feedback from us, then you basically can send us whatever that you prefer that is at least two minutes long. But just keep in mind that the feedback that we're going to be giving you is going to be based on sort of like the format and the criteria of a science slam. So we will not be giving feedback based on, let's say, uh, for example, uh, how your teaching skills are or something like that we'll be trying to give you feedback as if this was some kind of a, a, a of a science slam so if this is all that you want uh, you just want the feedback you want the certification and so on this is pretty good already and 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 you can you can just do that on the other hand if you're interested in, in putting a lot of ambition into your video, you may, maybe made something really interesting and nice, I encourage you to just go full out and try to do a full science slam in the video, at least 10 minutes long, and we can give you a feedback on that as well. But that would also qualify you for the science slam 2021 for 2021. So basically, last time somebody was asking, uh, it doesn't matter how well we do this. Uh, can we win something or whatever? If we like, uh, <laughs> if we like, is there like, will we pick the best video or something like that? Not exactly, but 
we will pick five finalists for the Science Slam 2021. And everybody that does send a full 10 minutes video to this will automatically, automatically qualify for that. So in that case, I would try to keep it as close to a science slam as possible. If you want to see how the science slam looked like in general, you can go to our Yoku uh, channel or also to our WeChat uh, uh, account of Eurexis China, and you can find examples of science slams that have taken place in the past. Uh, we've uploaded the recordings of that, and you can see it there. So. The answer to the question is, it depends on what you want out of it. If you just want feedback and so on, you can just send us what, what you want to do. If you want to qualify for the Science Land 2021, you should try to, your best to make as good video as possible. <laughs> All right. There's a question from uh, Xiu Feng. How to introduce the outline of a presentation? Uh, usually, uh, I would just read uh, see there are the two questions there. Yeah, maybe maybe you would like to answer. Yeah. Uh, okay. How to introduce the outline of a presentation? Uh, sometimes I would use a content slide, but I wouldn't read out one point introduction to methodology three result. Right. So you you could put a content slide there, but you don't explain there. You can just say, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Topic I'm going to make centers around how COVID nineteen works, and then the the method to get rid of it. I mean, that's it. One line would do. All right. So you don't read out what is the table of content. No, don't do that. Okay. Now, if you want to remove that content slide, is okay. Just straight away go into your story for that ten minutes. It's fine as well. Okay. Uh. On the second question, how to balance common introduction and science element? That's a very good question. Uh, because for science communication, we need some elements of science there. Something uh, a scientist do to explain how the mechanism, how it works. But it shouldn't be too deep and too much. And you also need the common introduction to support it, right? To support it. I would say the ratio for size element to 40, 60, 40 to the size element and common knowledge, general knowledge is about 60%. Okay, so you have a good balance with that. Then the story can flow better. You know, the common knowledge people can understand. Then there's some size element in there. 40, 60. Okay. Hmm. Very good. I think that's a very good point. I see that Cornelia asked the, mm -hmm. what's the difference between the content of a science slam and the video. There's no necessarily any difference. Uh, I mean, like for the video, you just sent in a, 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 an engaging science communication talk about the research of your interest, the research that you are doing, the topic of research that you're dealing with. This is also the criteria for a science slam. So that would be the same. I mean, like if you don't, if you don't wanna, if you don't care about the science slam aspect of it, I guess theoretically you could send us about anything that you would like to introduce. But in general, I think uh, the most useful would be to talk about your own research. So uh, the content would be basically whatever that you are researching at the moment. That could be a lot of things. I imagine most of you are researching a lot of different things, right? So you could pick something that, that you think is of interest and you would like to communicate. So what the content is, is up to you. Um, I see there's a question from, can I present on a research direction that I don't have concrete results? Uh, the experiments are still ongoing. It, well, you can you can basically present whatever you prefer. Uh, for as far as we are concerned, the um, uh, you can present anything about your own research in this uh, video that you're going to be sending us. So for the video slam, just send to us whatever you like to talk about. If in general, it's okay with you and your research group to talk about the research in any sense, then uh, why not? Uh, it might be something really interesting. A lot of the times uh, research takes long time and it might be worthwhile to, to start introducing it to the public even before it's finished, right? You just need to make sure that that is very clear to everybody that is uh, listening to you. Uh, also, uh, you might need to think about like whatever non-disclosure or whatever that that could be uh, affecting this. Uh, maybe there are some research that cannot be disclosed at some point. There's something that you obviously know better than us. 
But for the video slam itself that you sent to us, that's not going to be made public. It's only between you and, and us, so we will not be publishing it. Still, you know, uh, consult your own judgment when it comes to that. Uh, yeah, then there's a, uh, some uh, another person that is thanking thanking the people for uh, thanking you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank <laughs> there's a question uh, on the on. Uh, can I elaborate on that? Sure, go ahead. Uh, on the uh, on the questions of uh, concrete results. Now, for Science Slam, you don't necessarily have to present your own research finding. You can present the result, uh, the research that is concluded by other scientists. That is perfectly acceptable. Mm. So if that is not your work, you can say, oh, scientists have found that this is the result. You can present the result of others. That is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, yep. that so is it's very flexible. I think that that's very flexible. It's about communicating science in the end. Uh, I mean, like uh, if you want to see how this works, you can just look at like uh, <laughs> the videos for, from previous science slam, like the videos from uh, Chong Science Slam, which is on our WeChat account. You can see how he approaches this. <laughs> at Science Slam, there are slides for the support. This is a a, a question from uh, Gartska. Uh, mm -hmm. At, uh, there are slides for support for the video we are supposed to send. It's better to make a video for me just talking, only I'm visible in the video, or video showing the slides with my voice only. Uh, this is up, up to you. We will, I mean, like, you can do it in either way. Obviously, this, this might depend also on your video skills. If you have the skills to combine both, you talking and some slides, then that would be fine. In general, we will not be... Uh, how to say, criticizing criticizing you or giving you feedback based on how good you are at editing, editing videos, though. We will try to take into account how uh, good potential your science slam has as a communication piece. Uh, you might maybe mention it at the beginning, for example, that you were not able to combine these two things. I mean, like, one thing that you could do is that you could, for example, uh, go into a video program like this uh, combine the slides and the video that you're having right now and record it like Tencent allows you to do that in some Tencent meetings. So you could have both your face and the slides at the same time. You can turn off the slides and turn them on. You don't even need a fancy program for that. You could even just use this. Tencent now has like a, a recording button right there, just a suggestion. But you could do it in any way that you prefer. I think that if you want to make a very effective video slam, you might want to consider the visual elements and how you manage to catch, get people attention. Only showing the slides is probably not a super effective way to do that, but it might be the only possible way for you, obviously. In any case, we will give you feedback on all of that, and we will try to take into account whatever situation that you have. So, uh, yeah, what do you think, uh, Chong, in regards to that? If you would be doing a video slam at this point, what, what, how would you go about it? Oh, you mean for the initial uh, video or the final video? It's just like if you would be doing a video for right initial... now in 10 minutes video and, and the point would be to make as engaging 10 minute video about a science, uh, about a science uh, uh, topic. Uh, how would you, how would you, how would you approach to this? Would you uh, show your face or your slides or do something else? Uh, yeah, I would show my face definitely because uh, as, a, as a judges, I would like to see uh, your facial expression, your presentation, and the way you present your topic. So um, last time when I was submitting my video, just like you guys are trying to do now, uh, I have the same thought as well. Should I face my video? But I, in the end, I choose to show my show my face. So I use a handphone, you know, just a handphone, and then video myself giving the talk like this. And at that time, I did not use any slide, just my facial expression and the way to present okay so uh that is how i did it i think if possible if if it permits you can find a room with a project uh, with a projected screen behind you and then you video yourself with you and the slide together i'm not sure whether that is possible for you but i think that would be great because the judge can see your slide as well as 
you presenting it. Yeah. So if you have a pointer, then you can flip your PPT and then you'll give a talk facing the video. Okay. If that's not possible, probably you can submit your the video of yourself presenting it. Right. Uh, there was a question about the deadline again. At the beginning of the present two days presentation, we we uh, talked about how uh, the process is for this. Uh, just to recap a little bit, the deadline is at the end of the day, uh, before midnight, Friday, 23rd of April, two weeks from now. You get two weeks and one day. So this is the deadline. And you can host it at any uh, video server that you prefer. We recommend something like Yoku or Baidu Cloud or, or whatever that you are comfortable with. And then you can send it to us at china at urxs.net as my colleague Anna has already written into, into, uh, into, the, into the chat box. And just to clarify, we're talking about 23rd of April, not February. <laughs> 23rd of April, 2021, <laughs> in two weeks from now. Uh, any other uh, questions from the audience? We could even try to unmute uh, someone if they want to ask the question directly and, you know, be more expressive and communicative when uh, <laughs> asking their own question. Yeah. Anybody that wants to maybe at this end of this is the end of the five uh, webinars. Uh, we've been doing it together for five weeks now. A lot of you have been with us the whole time. Uh, we have some time now if you want to maybe <laughs> in person uh, participate in the discussion. Anybody wants to step forward and, 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 and ask us a question uh, using the voice? Let me see. Possibly not. <laughs> I see that Vanessa is also adding something about it in Chinese for those that are interested in, in, in the concrete details that are about the video submission. I will also be, uh, well, Anna uh, said that she'll also be sending this as an email later, right, Anna? We will send all the details after the presentation is finished. Yeah, for sure. We we will make sure that everybody receives the instructions uh, with the deadlines uh, mm. and uh, yeah, how to submit uh, the videos by email. We will also maybe post a notice on our portal mm. and uh, remind those on WeChat too. So, uh, by <laughs> so we make sure that by all means uh, you are informed uh, if you want to send us uh, your video. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, then I'm going to take uh, advantage of uh, this time and uh, ask myself, uh, Dr. Chong, a question. And my question is, uh, do you think there's uh, any uh, special difference or like you yourself, do you prepare in a different way when, uh, uh, let's say, hypothetically uh, preparing for a, for a slam in Chinese or English? So like depending uh, on the language you're going to use. Uh, actually, the tips that I shared just now is uh, applicable to the Ch Chinese slam as well. And for your information, right now, I am also participating in the Chinese slam, uh, Chinese oh. version of science communication. Uh, right now, we are at the uh, uh, Shanghai Pudong, uh, sorry, Pudong district level, which I have, uh, which I have qualified into. And I apply the same lines of, of thoughts for preparing for the slam in, in this, i.e. you have to be uh, energetic, your storyline must be clear, uh, etc. So it is applicable to all the science slam. I mean, science communication, in essence, they are all the same. You are just trying to present the scientific knowledge there. So I have also experienced in a Chinese slam. So I think there's not much difference, to be honest. Okay, great. Thanks, <laughs> yes. thanks a lot. And uh, just out of curiosity, how, how long does it take for you to prepare uh, a good slam? How, how would you? How would? You, how long do you say? Um, because the slam, uh, the the slam that I that I've been into is very much related to the work that I'm doing. So the experience helps, 
And you know, some of the slides that you have presented in your class or your, your thesis or whatever can be can be used in your slam. So I do I did not take very long to prepare my slides, for example, but I spent more time thinking of how to make my slam more exciting. What are the elements of surprise I want to inject and captivate the audience? I think that needs a bit of thinking. But generally, I think two to three weeks should be sufficient for you to prepare the slides and also your speech. Mm. Okay, yeah. that's great. So I think our deadline <laughs> is also in line with this, this time. So I'm yeah. happy to hear that. Yeah. I, uh, I see someone raised their hand. Oh, okay. Do you want to unmute I'm going to unmute the Chris Jung. So you can... Yes, you can you. go ahead, Chris. Uh, okay, I just have uh, one question because I kind of uh, missed the other four training. Uh, so I was wondering if you have any like a uh, record of these videos and uh, where I can access to. I know, and I know that you have this on on YouTube, but do you have uh, other that uh, you uploaded those videos? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you clearly. Oh? Anna, maybe would you like to answer, Anna? Um. Uh, yeah, I'll take this. Yeah, we heard you. Uh, look, we also have a Yoku channel, of course. Uh, so uh, we, yeah, we normally upload the recordings and also the the presentation slides, uh, unless uh, for some reason we are not allowed to on our portal. So on the same page where you registered for the event, you will find uh, uh, you will find for the past events. Uh, you will already find the, the the slides and the videos. Maybe only for the last week's event, uh, we were just still in the process of uploading the video. But yeah, you find them on the portal, and you can check out our Yuku page, uh, and there's all the recordings. Yes, thank you. Yeah, of course. We put it on Yoku, we put it on YouTube, so who, whatever is more convenient for you, you can find it. Like Anna said, uh, it's it's gonna be on the same place as where you registered. But maybe it could take a while. Right now we are in the middle of trying to upload it, but it's like two gigabyte files and it gets a little bit sometimes difficult. I'm really sorry about how it's delayed. It's like right now I'm processing, for example, uh, trying to upload last week's uh, presentation, but we do upload those and they are gonna, the recordings are gonna be available. And, and I, for example, do uh, encourage you when you do your Science Slam, a video submission you can look back towards last week's presentation where we talked about that as well of course today uh tips from from dr chong i think were very very helpful uh if you are not sure where to find it on our website china.euraccess.org we also try to send this as an email to everybody so everybody that are part of uh, the euraccess network uh, which should include everybody that registered for this event they do get or get like a regular uh, email updates where we do put all the recordings. So the recordings that we have uploaded so far are all have all been disseminated to people and so on. So we'll be we will try our best to make sure that um that you get all of that. Maybe even on a, maybe we might even do like a good at, after a week or so a good uh, overview of everything at one place like a page and maybe on WeChat and so on and share it again with everybody so people can find it in one place, which I think is always a good idea. Yeah, agreed. We will do that. Mm. Uh, are, are anybody else that wants to uh, uh, raise their hand and 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 raise their voice, as as we say? Well, if not, I I th I wanted to ask uh, Chong actually a little bit about what you were saying about your participation in 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 Chinese science slams or Chinese science communication uh, uh, competitions. I think. This, of course, should be of really big interest to the people that are, are participating here today. Like you pointed out yourself, uh, the, the main recommendations uh, for, for how to communicate science stays the same no matter what language you are. So if this is something that you're very interested in, uh, you should maybe look, uh, as a, uh, the audience should maybe be looking into what other competitions are available here in China. I, will, for example, was not aware that Putong District in Shanghai was doing something like that. I don't know, Chung, do you know if there's a lot of science communication going on in China now? Are there competitions on regional levels or something that we could uh, look into? Mm. Yeah, uh, actually in China, they, they've, they stress a lot on science communication as well. So the science communications competition for the Chinese that I'm participating 
it is organized by the local government. Okay, so it is a very uh, is an event that they they push or they emphasize a lot. So it is very structured in a way that you have to go through the preliminary round before you get into the quarterfinals, then the final. Then if you win, you get to represent Shanghai and to the national level. So I think this this combination is available for all provinces. It's a national event thingy. You can check it out. It's in Chinese. It's called uh, okay, science communication, essentially what we are doing here. And that is, uh, I, have, uh, I have that experience. And for the English one, apart from uh, Eurasex, I know that IET also has another version of science communication. They call it present around the world. So you can, uh, you can check it out, IET website, Institution of, uh, Institution of Engineering and Technology. Check out this event is also very happening in China. Mm. Uh, I think uh, IET is also very active in Beijing mm. and also. So last year, sorry, two years ago, uh, they have a selections, they have a IET present around the world in, in, uh, in, sorry, in China. So we have the university level pick the winner and then that winner will get to go to Beijing for the final. So I trained my students for that. And then he managed to grab the final, uh, you know, spot, final spot and went to Beijing for the finals. So IET present around the world is another one that you guys can can check it out. So uh, yeah, IET is really good. I met with them before, and they're doing really interesting mm -hmm. things all over China uh, in English. Uh, so if you're doing engineering or technology, etc., this is very good. Another one is what we mentioned in our first presentation about the falling walls, uh, which is the German competition that really? also does yeah. this year in China and including right. in Shanghai. Uh, they actually call it Innovation Lab here in China. Uh, so there's a little bit different name, but that's also very good. And then there's also these Chinese ones that you were just saying, and you should definitely look into. Mm -hmm. you, can you say the name again? Ke Pu Xiangma Da Sai. Ke Pu Jiangjie Da Sai. Ke Pu Jiangjie means science communication. That's ah. a literal translation. Yeah. So maybe you could write it into the chat box. For oh, yeah. Them to yeah. See. yeah I Certainly. think that would be very interesting for them. So they could maybe try to Google it. No, sorry, search for it here in China. Oh, yeah. They, they can uh, uh, probably see different based on what province hmm. they're in or what city they're in, I'm sure. I once worked with the Shanghai Ke Pu uh, to hmm. do like, this kind of competition, maybe in 2015. Yeah. And that was really big and interesting. Uh, there's also yeah. a whole world of that here. So a lot of yeah. you, you you people that are thinking about that as well, maybe you can get a little bit of, um, let's say, advantage over your competition by sending us uh, the, uh, the, uh, the communication piece that you're preparing already for this other competition. Send it to us and we'll give you maybe some constructive feedback that mm -hmm. a lot of other people will not be able to get. <laughs> That's true. Oh, there it is. Ah, uh, Jiangjie Da Sai. Ah, very yeah. good. That's really interesting. So I, I don't know. We're almost finished with our time today. Is there anybody else uh, that wants to ask maybe one final question? Uh, I, I, I'm not really necessarily uh, thinking that's very likely. <laughs> In that case, uh, I think maybe what we will just do is that we will uh, finish today by thanking again Dr. Chong for his excellent presentation. I thought it was really, really nice. It really summed up a lot of the different things that uh, needs to be considered. Uh, not only did you talk about how to structure your presentation around like the content and the story and how to make it interesting, but you even talked about how to present yourself, how to talk, how to use the states, how to move yourself. I really liked, for example, uh, when you were demonstrating uh, your posture during the presentation, you did not only say it, you actually did it, right? You just stood up, went a little bit away from it. Yeah, the, you're away from the microphone, so we don't hear you, but we definitely know what you mean, right? So not, <laughs> See, only, yes. yeah, not only is it good, you also showed us how to be a good science communicator by communicating excellently here today. So again, thank you so much, Dr. Chong. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah. And uh, I will just uh, use then the opportunity and, 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 and sort of declare that this series of science communication training webinars uh, is here by formally finished. Uh, maybe 
before I will thank you all for participating, maybe Anna would like to pitch in a little little closing words. What do you think, Anna? Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to say that I think we are we are very happy of this this training. So we really listen to very different uh, trainers on different topics, and I think also the approach they used during the webinars was very different. So it was perfect personally for me. It was very interesting, and I hope it was also for our audience. I think most of uh, uh, the people who are with us today stayed uh, with us uh, from the beginning or for most of the trainings. And uh, I would like also to take this opportunity to just uh, tell everybody that any comment uh, or you know feedback is also is always very welcome. So if uh, if you want to send us a uh, yeah <laughs> just the feedback on what you liked uh, or what uh, what could have been done differently uh, that always help us. So thanks uh, also everybody for for joining, uh, and uh, we are really looking forward to receive your videos. So please uh, send us uh, even a couple of minutes uh, just to test. The, uh, the competencies that you gained during these trainings and uh, get uh, get, a, get a feedback. It's um, I think it's it's always uh, um, very. I mean, what makes the difference is the practical training. What we've been saying uh, from the beginning is that uh, yeah, this is the theory you hear from the experience as well. But then what you have to do is to look at yourself in the mirror and test yourself uh, in front of the mirror and then in front of an audience. So please uh, uh, try to make this video and send it to us. And um, yes, the Halder, I think we're really getting to the end. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Anna, for all the, uh, you know, uh, help and, uh, and, 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 and organization all, to make all of this happen. And thank you also, Vanessa, so much for being with us throughout everything and connecting us with our, our Chinese audience. Uh, and also, like, finally, just thanks to all of you that stick stuck through all of this. I complained at the beginning that the webinars are not uh, an amazing way to do training because training needs to be hands-on. You need a lot of feedback to be able to get better at something. And that's what training means. So uh, I'm really sorry about that. And I really hope in the future we will get that opportunity to give you guys that feedback. But even still, a lot of you uh, have been going to all of these meetings. And I really hope that you've been using the opportunity between those meetings to maybe apply some of those tips and recommendations that uh, that came out. And now, right here at the end, is finally the final opportunity to actually get some feedback, uh, get a little bit better, try to think about how you would normally do a presentation, try to see if you can make it a little bit better using this, do it, learn when you're doing it, then get us to tell us what we think, and then, you know, get uh, even better. I think even that that whole process, even that's just one thing that we'll do once, is still still very valuable and something that most of us probably don't get an opportunity to do a lot. So I really admire uh, your steadfastness and the fact that you are, 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 are going to be doing all of that. I'm really looking forward to seeing all of your videos, just like Anna just said. And I want to thank everybody for participating in this series of webinars. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Chong, and uh, this is the end. <laughs> Let's stay in touch on the VJET group. Thank you, Halder. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.